at the end of this tutorial, your sun will look something like this and everything will be animated. In fact, I'm in the process of animating as we speak and uh, hopefully by tomorrow I'll have a trailer video that will show you how this animation looks and I'm not changing it if it didn't turn out well my computer. Hope you enjoy and please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're finally ready to animate our sun. Just full disclosure, I had to redo this entire thing. My save file got lost. So, and one of the poor differences is I'm using three pieces instead of four, but it doesn't really matter. If you're using four, it's fine. So the first thing you want to do is select on your sun base, and we're going to change, well, we're going to look at our shader view, and you'll notice that we are animating using our coordinates of our sun. If we go back to our sun base over here, our sun texture coordinate control and setup. And we actually created a driver for this. So if you click on your setup and you hover in the screen here and you press N, you'll see that it's purple. So we know that there's a driver set up there. And you don't really use the driver, um, you would use the control. So we select the control, hover over here, under numpad 3 and next to numpad 0, there's a delete full stop button, press that, and we found it. The other thing worth keeping in mind, uh, which we'll probably sh I should probably show you, if you don't remember, click on your sun texture coordinate setup, the one with the purple line here, go to your driver setting, and what this is saying is that this will move on the z-axis when, go to the drivers here, your sun texture coordinate control moves on the y-axis. And knowing that, we want to make sure you press numpad 3 so that we see our z-axis and y-axis, so we can see it moving in action. So I'm going to select the sun texture coordinate, coordinate control and I'm going to go to timeline over here and I'm going to hover my mouse in here and press I and click on location and then I'm going to press I'm going to change the limit this animation to 120 frames and then I'm going to press go to the end and press G Y and let's try and put GY 0 0.3 enter I location and obviously if you've got a potato PC like mine when you zoom in here to look at the texture move it may take like too long to render and it will just be a blur so what I do is I press control B and I just select a specific area like that so that it can path tracing can happen a lot faster and then I press play and we can just see how the animation looks and have a good idea whether we like it or not I'm quite happy with that and all we need to do now is press control alt B and it's all back so yeah that's good enough for me for this tutorial sake and now we're done with the base. Let's select our base again and let's just quickly go into our uh, shader editor and just confirm that there's nothing else. That we've animated these two bits. Is there anything else that we need to animate? It doesn't look like it. We could play with these settings to change the look and feel, but we're not going to do it in this tutorial. So we're happy with that. Next thing we want to do is click on our crown, our corona. The sun corona, select that. And we actually created this when we created the sun corona. Let's actually put this on zero. Hover over here. Press I. And now we need to change this to our timeline. Go to the end. Maybe make this 2.5. And press I. And you can choose based on your own measurements. And once again, we can zoom in here. Control B, select a small area, and then we can press play and just see how it looks. It's pulling out quite nicely. If you want it faster, you can just up this, but I'm quite happy with that for now. So we'll pause that, take it back to frame one, uh, Control Alt B, reveal the whole thing. So the corona is animated. Is there anything else we can animate here? Let's take a quick look. I don't believe so. We could animate the fade a little bit, but I'm going to leave it as is. 
Next thing we want to look at is the flares. So select your flares. And let's try and get to the right spot. The, the flares, let's minus everything, are animated by the particle setup. So for example, if we select this particle here, and obviously if we're messing with particles for the time being, well, let me just select this and just confirm. Okay, this is more than just particle setup. It's procedural texture animation. Okay, well, we're on keyframe one. Let's make this zero. And let's press I. And let's go to the end. Let's press 3. Let's press I. Let's go to the beginning. Let's just see how it looks. Control B. Seems to be a lot of flares here. So the flares. doesn't really do much from the looks of things. So let's go back, control alt B. So I guess it is animated, not that I think it's any good. And uh, what we could do is select change this to our 3D viewport, press below numpad 3, the full stop, numpad 7, so this is what we've got, and obviously when we mess with this, let's go to our 3D viewport, okay, it just gives that flame effect, which is not too bad. That being said, if it gives a flame effect, uh, perhaps we should go back to our timeline. Go to our end. Maybe make this 10. Press I. Cool. And obviously this is for a specific uh, sun particle. We kind of have to do the same to all of them. And I think it's automatically, no, it's not. Hold on, let's confirm. Yes, yeah, so it's automatically done for all of them. Okay, cool, so that part is done. So it should look like a flame is working. And let's go over here. Okay, that seems fine. Let's go to the next particle system. And once again, this seems fine. Okay, that's all done. The next thing is making these appear and disappear, which I think is this one here. Control B. Let's just select this chunk here. And let's change this to keyframe one. Let's go to our 3D viewport. We can change this now to our timeline. And we can change this to solid view mode. And we can make sure we're on this specific object. Oh, this one seems to be the thing that messes with this. That being said, I'm going to press I, Location, Rotation and Scale. And I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to press I. Well, first we have to rotate this. Press I, Location, Rotation and Scale. Okay, we'll just leave it like that. Let's select the next particle system. This one does the turning bit. So I'm going to go back to keyframe one. 
radius i, location, rotation, and scale. Now if I rotate this, I, oh, it's got a, the end frame actually, sorry. I, location, rotation, and scale. Let's choose this particle system. Let's go to keyframe one. Press I, location, rotation, and scale. And this just moves this. And we already know we want to move this on the Z axis. So get this to the end. G, Z, 2, I, location, rotation, scale. And if we go to the beginning and we just watch this, we should see some movement in our flares. Slowly but surely it's starting to move about. Okay, cool. Sun is slowly but surely looking, living and breathing. All right, so now we can switch to the graph editor. And let's start. Hold on one second, let me find the right particle system. Okay, maybe you want to start with GX. Okay, let's open this up. Right, so it looks straight, but if you zoom in, it is not straight. If you've got a home key on your keyboard, you can press it to get the right size. The flat lines you can ignore. We're only going to work with this over here. So you can just select this one here, the one with the bend, because that's what we've animated. Um, and then we need to change the shape. Currently, it's not the ideal shape that we want. We want to make it linear. Let's make this linear by pressing T and click linear. Try it again. T, linear. There we go. And we're still not done. Where is the option? It seems to be missing. Uh, deselect this line and select it again. Here we go. N N. Hold on. Select it there. N. There we go. Modifiers. Add a modifier and we're going to add a cycles modifier. And then we select this and we say repeat with offset and we select repeat with offset before and after. And that should give a nice effect. And essentially we're just going to do this with everything. So let's select the next thing. And if you hover over here and you press the home key, there we go, we found the one. So let's select uh, this, press T, linear. Then uh, let's expand this open, select this, modifier, add modifier, cycles, repeat with offset before, repeat with offset after. There we go. And then we're going to select the, okay, that's done, that's done, home button. Ooh, this is more tricky. super flat except for this one here we go I've got this one selected it's definitely going up and all we need to do now is press T linear add modifier cycles repeat with offset repeat with offset there you go, it rises to infinity, which is great. And uh, next thing we want to 
select is the sun particles. Now I'm pretty sure I added a keyframe to the sun particles. Not on the specific coordinates. It looks like it doesn't affect the graph editor. Okay, cool. We'll go back to the graph editor. We'll leave those for now. And we will minimize this. And we'll open up the sun corona. And let's expand this open. With this selected, we press T, linear, add modifier, cycles, repeat with offset before, repeat with offset after, and there you go. Works till infinity. And we'll do the same with the base sum if applicable with the coordinates. Let's go here. Let's press home. Okay, the only one that matters here, it looks like in this case, was the y-axis, home. And let's press T. In here. Add modifier, cycles. Repeat offset before. Repeat with offset after. There we have it. And that's the control. And we don't actually have to adjust the setup because the setup is the driver that it's affected by the lever which is the control so that should be it so now let's just quickly change this back to our timeline go back to keyframe one and let's just see how it looks roughly yeah looks okay i'm not a fan of the flares i should probably play around with that a bit more but otherwise it looks pretty good i'm fairly happy with the result overall all right, now the next thing to do is go to your render settings. We're currently on cycles, and you want to make sure you've got adaptive sampling turned on. Go to denoising and select this. You can use open image denoise, or you can use uh, NLM. Just, just give it a slightly more refined look. And what else could we change yet? Everything else is more or less okay, and the rest is just preference. I'm going to turn on motion blur as a preference and I think that's about about it in the render settings then we're going to go to our output settings and we are going to make sure it's not compressed 16-bit you, you can leave it on RGBA or you can just leave it on RGB because we're not really using any alphas in this um, Images are saved with RGB and alpha data if supported, so it doesn't really matter, but I'll just check on that. And what else could we change? The next thing we want to do is you want to select your sun. And with your sun selected, you want to press Shift D. And then you want to right click to make sure it goes back into the same place. You want to rename this sun particle system. And with the sun particle system selected, you want to go to your particle system and you want to make sure in the render tab, if you scroll all the way down there, the show emitter is deselected. Then you want to click on your sun and you want to scroll to the top and you want to remove the particle system altogether. Uh, which means your particle system is coming is it being emitted by another object to your your sun base, if that makes sense. And I guess we can create a new collection for this. Um, and we can call this particle system. Not that it's really needed. Uh, we'll chuck it in there. And the stuff we want to pay attention to now is your sun base and your sun particle system. So you want to select your sun base, you want to go to your physics properties. And you want to add dynamic paint and you, we're going to make this the canvas and we're going to change this to image sequence and you want to up the resolution for a much better result um, 1028 should be fine for this doesn't need to be higher than that but what's 1028 times 4 or times 3 
16, 24. Ah, let me, let me get the old calculator out. All right, so I'm just gonna make this, keep in mind the higher the resolution, the longer this will take. But the good news is we only have to do a single image and that kind of makes it pretty much worthwhile. Let's uh, expand this, change this to UV maps. The paint is fine. Let's change that to color. And we want this color to be black. And effect, ah, leave it as is. So that's pretty much everything on this. But now you've got a canvas. And with, with every canvas, it needs a brush. And we're going to use the particle system for that, dynamic paint. Change canvas to brush, add brush, change this color to white. So it's just F6 times one, two, three, four, five, six, enter. There you have it. And we can select particle system. And because we only have one particle system, it's no confusion, just select that. And this is where you can decide on the size. I'm going to make this 0. 0.06 and I'm going to make this 0 0.2 and let's see what else there is I don't think there's anything else that we need that's, that's about it with everything selected make sure you press file and you press save and then you go to your sun you scroll down and you press bake image sequence. You'll see over here it will last. This will take about a minute if you've got a computer like mine, maybe a few minutes. And I'll see you back shortly once it's fully baked. All right, that bake took about 30 minutes on my slow computer, not one minute. But let's uh, press on. Select your sun and change to change to your shader editor. And once you're in your shader editor, let's take a look and see what we've got here. Okay, I'm just going to move this a little bit away, like that. And we're going to go up here. We're going to press Shift A, Texture. And we are going to use, where is it? Image Texture. We'll drop this in over here. Can, we can press Open. And just find where you downloaded your file. It was to catch underscore dynamic paint. And there it is. Uh, you can press Control Shift click. See how it looks. Then we can press Shift A. And we can use a converter, a color wrap. Let me select that here. And if we increase this might be able to break this up a little bit better so we can see all the spots each of these individual spots is where a flare is so that might help a little bit we'll get back to this now we'll leave it as is for now and another thing we'd like to do is we're going to select this color dodge over here press shift d drag it over here and click here and then we want to connect our color ramp over there, which is currently over here, into color 2. And press shift, uh, control shift click here. And we can see those dots there. And we can reduce the factor here for a slightly different effect. So if we make this 0 0.98, take a look. And just for sake of time, I'm going to press Control B. Just select this bottom section here, so it doesn't have to render out everything. Zoom in. Make this 0 0.95. See, it's more faded into the scene. Can we go less than that? The 0 0.9 will probably be disappeared. It's virtually gone. So let's make it 0 0.925. Zero point nine five it is. Leave it on that, and we can press um, Alt 
E. Oh, sorry. Control Alt. There we go. Our scene is back. And we could play around with the color ramp as well. Obviously, if we go here, I'm going to zoom in. Control B. And you can just make it a little bit more smaller. So this is, you can see the spread here. Yeah? So there's no spread. It doesn't look right when it's like that. But just use your own estimation of what you think will look good. I think that looks perfect. Control Alt B. And that looks pretty good to me. Now, the next thing you want to do once you've created those marks, obviously, maybe we should adjust this more. Maybe it's too bright and circular. Let's reduce this to 0 0.93. It's actually looking a lot better. 0 0.9. 0 0.9 looks a bit more... I'm going to leave it at 0 0.9. I quite like how that looks. Cool. Now that we've done that, the next thing you want to do is go to your render settings. And uh, we've got the render set here. I was going to leave blur on motion blur, but I'll just turn it off for now. And I'm pretty much happy with everything. The only thing you could play around with if you like, press file and save. Um, turn on use curves, open this up, and we could play around with the curves here. Or slightly different effects. Save before you do anything. And let's get crazy. So for example, we could increase the contrast just a tad. And we could re reduce the green just a bit. Possibly the blue just a bit. Or deep impactful look. Increase the red. Quite happy with that. And we saw on the sun base, if you're not happy with this specific red, we could maybe choose one that blends a bit better. Control Z, so I get a comparison. Control Z, perhaps. Control Z. Uh, edit, we do. Okay, cool. I'm actually just happy with the with the existing color scheme. Let's play with the factor here. No, the factor is perfect. I'm quite happy with that. And if we change from color dodge, what would happen if we choose multiply? Just to get an idea. No, color dodge seems to be the right thing. What does color burn do? No, definitely not that. Okay, let's go back to color dodge. Where is it? There it is. Let's leave it like that. That's perfect. And this is my final result. So we've animated this. We've created the, improved the look of the flares. All that's left is to render this. It's going to be output. Let's scroll to the top. Uh, you can even RGB 16, zero compression. Make sure this is on 100. We render this out in HD, 24 frames per second. And you can choose your render file location. In this case, I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. Right click, new folder. And I'm going to call this Sun Ren Render Files. And I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to say accept. So now we've got that as the file location. And we're pretty much done with everything at this point. Just save before you do anything because Blender could crash when you try and render. And we didn't even get to play with the compositor yet, but maybe next time. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And yeah, better render this out. It, 
if you're wondering how it will look, if I press play, my computer sucks and I won't render this out in time and I need to pick a video every day. Um, best thing I can do is press Control B, chuck a selection like that, space bar, and you can just see the animation yeah, for this piece at least. So it's not too bad. Um, is there anything else I want to have selected? Let me quickly just double check one final look. And I'm going to play around with the color management a little bit more. You know what, I don't like it, so I'm just going to undo it quickly and go back to the previous position on the screen. And just leave it like that, I prefer this. But play around with the curves, it should be fine. There is really nothing else I can or want to do. So, I mean, I could remove the light source, because now there's going to be no light bouncing from the scene. So I guess I can even do that. Put the back on 12. So okay. Now let's leave it as is. Don't want to mess with anything. And one final save. Control S. And then we render our sequence. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. I'll start off by rendering a single image. And then I'll render the animation thereafter. Cheers.